Today on the IPR Game Room, we're going to be talking about Catherine Rahman's Red Carnations on a Black Grave. Before we get started, uh, Red Carnations on a Black Grave uh, is a, a game about the Paris Commune. Um, it is it is a rarity here at IPR in that uh, that we actually uh, went out and solicited this game. Right, it was it was not sent to us. We went out and sought it out. Uh, I did this after I heard it mentioned on the Revolutions podcast, which I believe the author and I are uh, both fans of. Um, and the Revolutions podcast, if you've never subscribed to it, uh, highly recommend it. It's just about revolutions, whether they're uh, Simon Bolivar uh, in uh, South America or Haiti or the Russian Revolution or the various French revolutions or the great liberal revolutions of the 1840s. Uh, they are all about revolutions. So highly recommended. Search, search it out on a Stitcher or, or uh, Apple Play or wherever you subscribe to podcasts. I'm going to do something unusual in talking about this game. I'm going to talk about the second half of the book before the first. So Red Carnations on a Black Grave comes in this attractive box. Um, and it contains a book and several decks of cards. We'll start off with the book before we move on to the cards later in the discussion of this game. Um, here is the book. The second half of this book uh, is a historical review of French history through the lens of revolutions uh, and also uh, revolutions uh, in various colonies, which, which affect the game, actually, because they affect some of the player characters you can select in the game. Um, it's extremely well written. Um, I have no idea whether the author is a professional historian or, like myself, just a student of history. I never call myself a historian because that's a real profession with a degree. Uh, but I have been reading history actively throughout my entire life. And um, I, 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 give, I give the second half of this book, uh, the historical part, <clears throat> pretty much an A. Uh, it's, it's, it's very well written. It's very professionally written and very objective. Uh, given given the nature of the game uh, and the the views you know that I can extrapolate of the author, uh, it's pretty fair uh, and very well written. Uh, highly recommended. Uh, I'm a big fan of reading history generally, and I, I enjoyed it um, a great deal. If you don't know much about French history and the history of revolutions in France or the Paris Commune, um, uh, hi highly recommended. It's just as a read separate from the rest of the game. So. The reason the historical second half of the book is important is because of the first half. Now, <clears throat> Red Carnations is a game about, again, the Paris Commune. And uh, specifically, each player has two characters that they play over a series of three acts plus some sub-acts, I'll get into that, um, who are communards, who were uh, people in revolt in the Paris Commune. Now. It's an interesting question whether the Paris Commune was in revolt uh, or was attempting to assert itself as the legitimate government of France. Um, I'll leave that for historians to decide. Uh, nevertheless, uh, Paris essentially had its, had its own government, which it traditionally didn't have. Traditionally, um, uh, Paris was administered by the federal government of France. Uh, whether that was the crown or the republic, it didn't really have its own autonomous government. It, it does now as of, I think, 1968. So that took a while. Um, but um, the communards uh, are represented by a variety of uh, player cards you can select. Um, uh, and there are instructions on how to affect, here's the player cards right here. These are all character cards, rather, sorry character cards. There are instructions on how you can uh, affect the tone of the game and set various tones to the game uh, by selecting different combinations there we go, of character cards. Now, <clears throat> one thing I should note uh, is that you go into this game knowing that uh, your, your, your characters are going to die. Uh, it's, it's not, it doesn't have a happy ending because the Paris Commune did not have a happy ending. Um, so you go in knowing your characters are going to die or be put in prison or, or exiled uh, or sentenced to hard labor. There's not a happy ending for your characters. So 
Uh, in this respect, Red Carnations draws a lot on an earlier game and says so in the thanks of the game, which is, for those of you who've never played it, Monsiger 1244, uh, which is a game about the doomed Cathar heresy in southern France. It owes a lot to this game design-wise, which is a good thing. Uh, because Monsiger 1244 was a very fine game. We carried it here for many years until eventually we sold every copy and it went out of print. Um, so, uh, the game takes place in three acts. Uh, there is a prologue where uh, you read various bits of, of sort of historical, his, historized fiction around the table. Um, and then you do three different acts. Uh, each of these acts represents sort of uh, the, the rise, uh, the decline and fall of the Paris Commune over a period of like six or seven weeks. It didn't last super long. Um, each one of these involves uh, a second deck of cards that has both questions and locations in it. Uh, now, I'll come back to the questions in a moment. The locations um, are certain places throughout Paris that were important during the Paris Commune period. Uh, they can be used essentially as, as backdrops and props for the action that takes place. Uh, besides your three acts, uh, you also have uh, montages, which are um, at certain points in the game where you act out something one of your two characters is doing wordlessly, without speech. You describe... Um, uh, sort of a montage of visual events. Um, uh, the final third act of the game is called the Bloody Week, and this is the week where the French army <coughs> proper uh, broke into Paris, uh, and no one really knows how many people died. Best estimates are 30,000 people. Uh, but the French army came in. Uh, the capital was being defended by the National Guard, which was uh, much like our own National Guard, sort of the Citizens Army, um, and had often been since the French Revolution, sort of the kind of the vanguard of, of the, the, the like middle class and lower classes of France. The French Army proper came in with assistance uh, of the German Army uh, and pretty much shot everyone that they thought was in the National Guard, uh, and pretty much anyone that looked at them sideways. So that, that turned out to be about Estimates range from 20,000 to 100,000 people. 30, 35,000 people are killed during the Bloody Week uh, in Paris. And that is, the final, um, that is the final act. After the final act, you have an epilogue where if one of your characters survives, uh, they go on trial. Uh, and they get to make a heroic speech. Um, and... Uh, uh, this is followed by sentencing, either they're innocent, which not a lot of people got, you know, found innocent. Um, <clears throat> about 32,000 people, I think, were sent into exile, into prison, or executed in the wake of the Bloody Week. Uh, and then finally, <clears throat> after the epilogue, you have a discussion group about how the game sort of made you feel, kind of emotions it aroused and what you sort of took away from it. Um, all very interesting game design. Um, uh, you have... Throughout the game, you have, um, <clears throat> you have question cards uh, that help guide the storytelling of how your characters are interrelated, because part of the idea is that um, not only is the Paris Commune period the backdrop of the story, uh, your, your, your characters are designed to be interconnected in various ways using the question cards, and each act, each, each player gets to use several question cards for their characters uh, and explore their relationships with each other. Um, the writing style of, uh, of the first half of the game part of the book, as opposed to the history of the book, is written very differently, uh, which is very hard to do. So, so my, my, uh, my French beret is off to Catherine Raman for having completely different writing styles in the two halves of the book. Um, the, the first half is written in a very romantic, I don't want to use the term hyperbolic due to its negative commentations, but a, a very romantic and emotional way. Um, and not in sort of a objective historical way, uh, and uh, that's very very impressive. Uh, you can do two different, completely different voices uh, in the game. Um, uh, it's written from a very, you know, when I was reading it, I was thinking the perspective was very uh, uh, Marxist feminist, but I don't think it is. I think it's very ANCOM feminist. I think it's very it's it's very anarcho communist feminist. Um, 
So uh, kind of women are at the forefront of the storytelling. Uh, there's, there's a lot of female characters. There are male characters too. Uh, but the kind of women characters are at the forefront, uh, which, is, which is fair enough. Uh, because there were uh, a lot of French feminists at the forefront of the Paris Commune and a lot of women involved in both the fighting and the various committees that ran the Paris Commune. Um, it describes the various factions that were in the Commune. Uh, there were a couple different sorts of Marxists. There were anarchists and there were radical Republicans uh, in the French Republic sort of sense. It goes into considerable detail about sort of who was there and what faction you belong to and what's happened to you. Um, while it is romantic, uh, it is obviously an homage to the Paris Commune. Um, the author doesn't really spare the shortcomings of the Paris Commune in the game. Um, uh, uh, you know, there a lot of bad happened. A lot of a lot of bad things happen when when uh, revolutions violently crumble in on themselves. Uh, and she's not sparing in saying, "Okay, you know, justice within the Paris Commune was a, a bit a bit dicey." such as it was. A lot, a lot of bad things were done. Um, but the author is pretty firmly on the side of the, is extremely firmly on the side of the Paris Commune, um, and also highlights the many good things that happened. Um, so check it out. I think this is an important game. Uh, I, I, I enjoyed reading it a great deal. I think it's um, very much worth playing and exploring um, if you like this sort of storytelling experience, and I know I do. Uh, and so um, pick it up from Indie Press Revolution and follow us on our social medias, the Facebook, the Twitter, the Instagram. Uh, subscribe to our newsletter. Uh, links will be below. And remember, gamers, the real flag of France is the tricolor flag. Disparaissent, le soleil brille.